what's the most powerful tool in a developer's tool belt? I think it's an accurate mental model. If you understand how things work, then you can use those things well and debug them when things go wrong. But we've run across a problem in the age of LLMs. It's difficult to have an accurate mental model of how an LLM works. Even the people that build LLMs can't trace all the way through how an LLM arrives at a particular output based on a particular input. But if we could have a mental model that's useful enough in order to guide how we teach using LLMs, how we make decisions on processes that include AI, then that would be useful as developers. And that's what I'd like to present to you today. A useful mental model that is accurate enough in order to make decisions and teach and explain how LLMs work and as developers make choices about how we deal with risk mitigation with LLMs and more. So here's the idea. We shouldn't be thinking about what LLMs do as thinking, but rather as a prediction. And if we think in terms of prediction, we can derive a good mental model that helps us make the best use of AI. So the mental model that I've come up with, I'm calling the lighthouse model of LLMs. And I think you'll find it useful. Let's imagine all of the information the LLM has been trained on, its corpus, as a kind of space that the LLM is going to travel in, whether it's books or forum posts or other people's code. It's all been encoded into the LLM's memory. When we then initiate context, like a prompt, let's say polite neighbor, we're using our tokens to ask the AI to make a prediction. It needs to move through the space of things that it's seen before to generate something that looks like a human response. So all of the words we give the LLM, like polite neighbor, and then let's say we say, how are you? We think of those like lighthouses or beacons, buoys in the sea, highlighting the general direction that we want the LLM to travel in through its probability space. What are the words that should come next? So whatever information we give it gives it a starting point and waypoints to use to guide the prediction machine. We're not guaranteeing where it will travel, but we're giving it guidelines. And then the LLM will carry out inference. Let's big word alert that. Have you thought about what inference really means? Well, it comes from the root word infer, which means to carry forward or draw a conclusion. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the conclusion is correct. It just means we come to a conclusion. Therefore, inference we can think of that as drawing a conclusion from data. And in the case of AI, it's generating predictions from new input data to a model. So we have an existing model with many examples of text, let's say. And now it's going to infer what might come next from a piece of text that we give it. We'll think of inference as travel. The AI using those lighthouses, the waypoints that we've given it with our input, well, it's going to find what should be the proper response. Polite and neighbor and how are you are phrases, tokens that it's seen before and that guides it in a direction of what probably should come next. So polite neighbor, how are you? And it travels and might say, I'm fine. Thank you. Our words nudging it in a particular direction within its memory. And as it continues to travel through its probability space, as it continues to infer, we get new output. But it's non-deterministic. We're not giving it exact points to travel through, but guidelines. And there's a degree of uncertainty involved. So the next time you give it the same input, you might get something slightly different, but is still a likely response based on all of the examples it's ever seen. A slightly different path, but still nudged by the waypoints the lighthouses that we've given it, that it can see in the confusion of all of its training data. If we do something similar, but with a different context, like the word receptionist as our context, as our prompt, and we say, how are you? Then we're activating, we're lighting up a different area of its memory. 
the words we've chosen are nudging it in a different direction. So when the LLM carries out inference, then that travel will be in a slightly different direction. Maybe some of the things would be similar, but instead of saying, how are you? It might say, how may I help you? It's travel through the probability space is influenced by the matches it finds for the words we've given it. And the same is true for code. If I say web developer, and then I say add two numbers, I've probably lit up a bunch of JavaScript. So the output I get, even without saying JavaScript, probably will be, well, a JavaScript function, not C sharp, not Java, maybe not Python. Because the words I've given it, the lighthouses that I've lit up, are encouraging it to travel in that direction as it mathematically produces output based on probabilities. And this model helps us with other phenomena that we see in LLMs. If we simplify this down to a 2D grid and we think again of the LLM traveling, well, as we give it a prompt and we're highlighting a particular area of its memory, activating it like a buoy or a lighthouse in the sea or in space, we can think of all of the context we give it, files and everything else, as lighting up all of these areas of its memory for it to then infer, to make judgments about how to travel and give new output. But that new output then becomes part of the input for the next time it carries out inference. In AI's own responses are lighthouses in itself. And that helps us understand the dangers of an LLM simply reflecting back to us our own opinions as if they were always correct. Our own inputs and its own response influence the following response, the direction of travel. This model also works for understanding the idea of drift and recency bias. As the LLM travels, as we carry on with inference, we'll begin to lose lighthouses, buoys that sink, lights that turn off. What came long before begins to no longer be the primary waypoints by which the LLM travels. So we start to see the LLM give outputs that deviate from our original intention, which is why we perform context refresh, starting over with new context so that we can pull the LLM in the right direction as it does its predictive work. By the way, if this model is clicking for you, this is what I'm using for my AI courses that I'm now producing. One is already out, it's on AI literacy. It's designed for everyone in your organization, everyone in your business to take. It's a short course to help guide how we think about using LLMs and to mitigate risk. And coming up will be a course on AI assisted software development. So you can find links in the description and subscribe to this channel as I'll make announcements as the courses come out. So with this mental model, we think of our words as guideposts, not instructions, light in the dark, but there's no guarantees of exactly how it will travel. If we accept this mental model and understand it, then that can help guide the processes that we develop as software teams, as organizations, as businesses, in order to use LLMs well, to mitigate their risk, to understand where they fit in and maybe where they shouldn't, and understanding that we go beyond the hype past the marketing of LLMs and understand that they are just prediction machines. They don't think, they don't feel, they don't care. Their goal is not to be accurate. Their goal is to look like human output. And they do that quite well. And it's up to us then to mitigate those risks and use them well. So this was the lighthouse model of LLMs. I hope this mental model helps you and your team, your organization and business get the best results from your usage of AI. And if you enjoy this content, please subscribe. Happy coding.